Hi, superstars. I hope you have had another wonderful day. Today's story, all about finding your voice and being different, is called Three Hens and a Peacock. Those look like hens, like chickens, and there's a peacock. It was written by Lester L. Laminac and illustrated by Henry Cole. Look, it even won an award, the Book of the Year Award. This is Three Hens and a Peacock. Things were quiet on the Tucker's farm. The cows chewed their cud, the hens clucked and pecked and laid their eggs. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. Once in a while, someone would stop by to bait, would stop to buy tomatoes or corn, perhaps a quart of milk. Nothing unusual happened there until that peacock showed up. That peacock was in the box that fell off the truck. The cows and the hen and the hens and the old hound kept right on doing what they'd always done. But that peacock had never lived on a farm. He had no idea what to do. So he spread his fancy feathers and set to shrieking. Eventually, the peacock one wandered down to the road. When cars whizzed by, he shook his feathers and crowd, cried out in his loudest voice. Of course, folks stopped by for a closer look. That guy's taking a picture, and so is that one. They're pointing at him. There's the peacock. Day after day, more folks stopped to admire the peacock, and they all bought tomatoes and corn, eggs and milk. Business on the Tucker's farm was booming. Everyone seemed happy to have visitors stopping by. There's that peacock, you look so happy. But look at those guys. but trouble was brewing in the hen house. The hens were squawking and cluck, clucking and flapping their wings. We do all the work around here. I'd like to see that peacock lay one single egg. Exactly, he just struts around here screaming. I suppose fancy feathers are more important than laying eggs. That lazy peacock gets all the attention and we do all the work. Uh-oh, are they being very kind to the peacock? And who heard it? <gasps> the peacock did. For peacock, the peacock had heard every word. For days he moped about, moaning and groaning. I wish I could be more useful around here. Hmm. Clucked one hen. The others ruffled their feathers. The old hound stretched and slowly raised his head. Why not let the peacock stay here to be useful? while you hens take the glamorous job down the road. So the dog sang, switch places and see what happens. Let's see. The three hens began clucking to one another. What a wonderful plan. Yes, it's a fabulous idea. Oh, ladies, we simply must fancy up our feathers tonight and nothing but our brightest beads, bangles and bows. We'll stop traffic for sure. Why, you girls know I can strut with the best of them. The peacock perked up. Let's do it, he declared. Tomorrow I'll stay here, sit on a nest and cluck. And we'll get all gussied up, said the hens. We'll be so glamorous. At sunrise the next morning, the hens strutted down to the road. Look at their outfits. Do you think they'll catch attention? The peacock marched right to the hen house and poked his head inside. The hens flocked by the road waiting for a car. When they saw one approaching, they clucked and squawked and flapped their wings in a flurry of feathers, but every car whizzed right on by. The peacock sucked in his tummy and wiggled from left to right, trying to squeeze through the tiny hen house door. His front half was in, his back half was out. Uh-oh, are any of them having a very good time switching places? Not yet. Down by the road, those hens tried every chicken trick they knew. Still, no cars stopped, even with them looking like that. Finally, the peacock made it into the hen house. He held his breath and pushed with all his might, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not lay a single egg. Not one. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. What's that peacock doing in the hen house? Asked Farmer Tucker. Who knows, said Mrs. Tucker. And what are those hens doing down by the road? Not a one of them is up here laying eggs. 
Well, the way things are going, we aren't likely to have anyone buying eggs today, said Farmer Tucker. We need that peacock down there stopping cars. When the peacock heard that, he smiled the biggest smile you have ever seen on a bird's beak. I am helping, he thought. He squirmed back and forth until he popped out of the cramped hen house. Then he trotted off to find the hens. So Peacock has a big job, right? He's the one that gets people to stop at the farm. The exhausted hens were all clucked out. Every feather was out of place. What a day! We couldn't get one car to stop. It's true why most of them didn't even slow down. Was that job as easy as they said it was, or they thought? The peacock met the hens as they trudged up the road. I can tell you I'm no good at laying eggs, he said. I'm just not meant for it. One hen, one hen nodded. I put on my stellar strut and even I couldn't stop a single car, she said. I have to hand it to you. Fancy feathers, your job is harder than it looks. The other hens agreed. The peacock looked relieved. Phew. So the hens marched back to the hen house. The peacock strutted down to the road. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. And things were quiet again on the Tucker's farm. Uh-oh, then what's happening? I see another box coming off a truck. I wonder what will happen next. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that story about how important it is for us all to be different and for us to use our voices to say what we feel. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.